Hello, once again, welcome to this video tutorial, Rudiments of Music. We are now in Module 4, titled Understanding Bars and Measures. Okay, in this topic, we're going to talk about the bar. We're going to look at the bar, then learn how to identify time signature from a measure. Then we'll talk about anacrosis, then the beats. We'll now do the Module 4 assignments. Okay, the bar, also known as measure, this is a segment of time corresponding to, you know, a specific number of bits, where every bit is represented by a particular node value and divided according to equal boundaries. Okay, to simplify this, music, every music has a time signature. And in that time signature, we have what we call beats. Now, these beats are divided into equal uh, measures. Let's say in a particular measure, also known as bar, we have four beats. Then that means in the next one, we also have something like four beats and so on and so forth. So the bar helps us to divide a piece of music into equal measures. For example, we had said dividing music into bars provide regular reference points to pinpoint locations within a piece of music. For example, sometimes in the choir, when the choir master is teaching a particular song, you know, sometimes he might say, uh, let's go back to bar 52. Okay, start from bar 40, 43, maybe go to bar 102 or something like that. So bars provide reference points specific locations that you can you know the choir master can easily call your attention to it helps to divide the music in uh, you know particular measures within boundaries that are that can be easily identified and located okay now how do we identify time signature from bars somebody might ask what is the need of these bars aside reference points to which the choir master could call our attention back to okay it's also used to identify time signatures for example you know we know that music comes in time signatures like three four the four four two four and so on and so forth but bars can also help you to identify the time signature of a particular song without that time signature being written down. For example, take a look at that. You know, normally in uh, sofa uh, sheet music, they normally write the time signature at that point there. But in this particular case, it's not stipulated. So what do we do? How do we identify the time signature of this particular piece? Okay, now, that's very simple. Take a look at the first bar. You see this and that. And take a look at the second bar. You see, we still have two of that there. Take a look at the third bar. We still have those two there. So, for you to identify the time signature of a song, count the number of colons that you have there. Not the dots, not the commas, but the colons. Just like we have one colon there, and we have another colon there. Okay, now, how many do we have there? Two, right? Okay, now that you have counted two, all you need to do is add one. Add one to that value, the number of colons you counted. That value that you get, which is three in this case, becomes the... Okay, let me use borrow the term numerator you know in sheet music uh, we have three four 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 two four and all so now let's say in the case of three four let's call three because it's above let's call it numerator and the four denominator so now this and that which is two we counted two in that bar then we added one to it which is now three 
we already know that the numerator of the time signature of this particular piece is 3. And when you have 3, of course, we know that most times you have 3, 4, and all. So you can easily say, okay, this piece is in 3, 4. Okay, let's take a look at the second bar. You see that the same thing is applicable there. See, 1, 2. We add another one, making it 3. And this is 3, 4. The same thing is applicable there. 1, 2, add another one, 3. That's 3, 4. Okay, now, in some cases, you might have something like this. Where the first bar, the number of colons in the first bar is not equal to the number of colons you have in the second and the third and so on and so forth. So in that case, I would recommend that you don't start counting the colons in the first bar. Look at the ones at the middle. Maybe the second or the third to be on the safe side. Just use these ones and do your counting to determine the time signature. Like this, right here we have two, one, two. We add another one to it, making it three. And we can say we have three, four time signature. And that also. Because some composers, when they have, for example, looking at this point, see that there is no note there. There is no note here. There is no note there. That means the choir is expected to rest at this point. And the voice part, this voice part starts from here. This other voice part, which is also, will rest until they get to that point before they start singing. Now, most composers, when they see that the entire choir has nothing to do at this point in the first bar, they tend to ignore putting this. So they just start with the first note and progress with that. So that's why most times, if you use this to judge, you might make mistakes. So it's better you start probably count with the second bar or the third bar. With that, you can easily derive the time signature of that piece. Remember, you count the number of colons, not the dots, neither the commas, nor the semicolons. No. Count only the colons. This this. Assuming you have maybe other things here like dots or commas or semicolons, please do not count those. Just concentrate on this. You must see them. Count how many colons you have there. Then add one to whatever you counted. That forms your numerator. Assuming I counted five here, I would have added one to it and it would be six. And I can easily say, okay, this song is uh, six, eight times signature. But well, in this case, I counted two, I added one to it, and it's three. So now I easily know that it's three, four time signature. Okay, now, about this, that brings us to this anacrosis. Anacrosis is known as, also known as pickup, is a note or sequence of notes which precedes the first downbeat in a bar. You know, Western standards for music notation, they often include recommendations that when a piece of music is, uh, you know, begun with an acrosis, the notation should omit a corresponding number of beats from the final bar in order to meet the length of the entire piece at a whole number of bars. So, if an acrosis is present, the first bar after the anacrosis is assigned bar number one. That is why sometimes when you see such a thing like this, most times the composer might start with this bar as number one and ignore the, you know, first. Okay, so the point is this. Whenever you see this, you know that the, uh, after looking at this, you have three, four, and here we are supposed to have two behind, but the composer decided to ignore it because this is the first bar and the choir is resting at this point. He, uh, he decided to ignore the, uh, uh, identifying the verse there. Then you say you have an accuracy. Okay, that brings us to beats. You know, in music, the beat is the basic unit of time, you know, like the pulse, the heartbeat of the music, a repeating event. 
it is a kind of rhythm that listeners will, you know, when you tap your toes or, you know, you snap your fingers and all, when you are listening to music, you know, that note that you give to a piece of music, tapping your toes, you know, hitting your legs, you know, something like that, tapping your legs or something like that, you know, this is what we call beat, and it is represented using this, where you see the colons, where you see the semicolons, the dots, and the commas. These things are used to represent it in time, um, sorry, so far notation. Okay, as we progress, we'll get more used to it, and we'll be able to decipher the meaning of each. Okay, now we we'll do the module 4 assignment. Please, you take your time, go through these questions, try as much as possible to answer them correctly, and uh, approach your choir master or your music director for grading. At this point, you can pause the video, take your time, go through the questions and answer them. And please make sure you get approval from your choir master or your music director or your tutor before you progress to the next module. Okay. Thank you. We we'll meet again in module five, where we'll talk about how to interpret two-four time signature.